What you're about to see and hear exists in reality in Jamaica and has become one of the many unfortunate chapters. After accepting loans and conditionalities from the World Bank, lost its largest cash crop markets due to competition with Western imports. Today, countless farmers are out of work, for they are unable to compete with the large corporations. Greetings, massive. Wagwan, Jamaica. It is important that we make some connections with our history. The departure from course during this period of industrialization and industrial development was not due to external forces. It was due to the misadventure of the PNP which diverted us from the path of economic growth, selling the people of Jamaica false hope and unrealistic dreams for which the country is still paying today. Those countries that were not distracted from the path of economic development and maintained a steady and balanced course managed to align their education systems and their economies to take advantage of the opportunities of industrialization, even if they were lagging behind at the time of the third industrial revolution. The consequences related to the corruption in the World Bank loan were that half the schools were built that could have been constructed. Not enough schools were there for the expanding student population which led to severe overcrowding of classrooms, bad student performance, poor learning outcomes, and low productivity. But there is hope. Since the end of the 1960s, our people have learned that the political award of contracts on partisan bases and not on competence is hurting Jamaica and holding back our development. Our authorities have set up an office of the contractor general and other anti-corruption institutions, which need to be strengthened, but which are a step forward. This is why National Integrity Action is supporting the establishment of a single anti-corruption agency, which brings together the anti-corruption bodies and gives them prosecutorial powers. But NIA alone cannot do it. What can you do? You need to give us your support in the call for a single anti-corruption commission and each and every one of us needs to be watchdogs to ensure that money borrowed or money gotten from our taxes gives us value for money and does not end up in the pockets of partisan contractors and ultimately back into the pockets of politicians to fight elections. What this animation shows is the development of two countries and we've picked Jamaica and Singapore. And you can see in the background there, the year is running like a clock. Singapore is picked out in red and Jamaica is picked out in yellow. And you can see the two economies developing almost in parallel throughout the 1930s, the 40s, the 50s, into the 60s. And there we get to the crucial year, early 1970s, and you can see what happens. Jamaica's development effectively stops, while Singapore continues on a high growth path. So I will argue that the data put forward by Transparency National speaks primarily to what happened in the farmer space. Because that is the place you can manage the most. Nobody tries to study in farmer space because it's too dynamic and it's too expensive. So most of these information coming out is really about what we know as a regular business people. It's not even so much you downtown when you sit on the road doing them thing. You don't have the time for actually doing the research with those people that cost too much. So if you take our more um, moderate estimate of 7.5% and say, well, if we, um, accumulate, if we aggregate that cost over the last 40 years, what does that add up to? And it's uh, well over 18 billion US dollars that we forfeited. Now what that means is that the great, we're currently one of the most heavily indebted countries in the world. Something like 90% of our current public debt is the equivalent of what crime and corruption has cost us these last 40 years. In 2011-2012, almost one quarter of Jamaica's people lived in squatter settlements, in settlements illegally occupying either government or private land. 
This resulted from over 100 years of Jamaicans moving from country to town in search of a better opportunity, but without adequate settlement and infrastructure programs. In 1994, the government of the day sought to deal with this problem with Operation Pride. Hundreds of millions of dollars of Jamaican taxpayers' money was invested in this program to regularize the squatting problem. Operation Pride did not achieve its objective to the fullest extent. Why? Numerous irregularities identified by the Auditor General, the Contractor General, as well as a special task force. Irregularities centered around political interference in the award of beneficiaries in the payment of contracts, which ensured that hundreds of millions of dollars were lost without us Jamaican people getting value for money and sorting out the squatter problem. And that is why, that is why, from the very start, I built a fundamental element in Operation Pride that would make sure we no longer were distributing houses or land based on political affiliation. Talking about housing in Jamaica and how difficult it is to get a house, I tell you straight up, it's hard. I'm not even going to put it for say, it's difficult, it's it ter- it tough. I came home from my studies in 1994, May of 1994. Heard about this grand announcement by the government of Jamaica to deal with a comprehensive land policy that would alleviate squatter. People don't want to live in a country. People want to live in a town. And take far like, for instance, like say Mona Common. People don't want to move from there because of some, some, some ties. They have a lot of ties there, so they don't want to move. Well, I just go, my parents, I don't think they had a choice um, back in the day, um, based on their background. So they founded this land and was living on it. It is what it is, a squatter community, because we just found the land and lived on it. So it's not that, you know, oh, we're just squatters. I don't think you, people even look at it. You know, if you go around and you ask people, you know, you're a squatter, they won't be able to tell you what it is. They just know that they're living, right? So if we could get, or if there is anything in place for us to build up the infrastructure, um, I don't think it would be known as a squatter's land. I'm not sure if you really want to talk to me about Operation Pride because I was a beneficiary as a young professional and I watched firsthand something that started off as a good idea turning into a corrupt, corrupt project. We usually go down by the gully that is in the river, the riverbed, and pack stones and, and, and the, 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 the money that we should get from, from that. It go towards the same. What is the phone name again? What is the thing name again? What are you Pride. This this operation pride yes, thing. Yes, operation right? Pride. So over the years now it's like the whole of us as citizens here, most of us had tally books and we used to show. Because we we, we expected to, you know, come out of this doldrum we was living in because of the plans where them come up with us, to us with, you know? It was something that was supposed to provide a housing solution. In fact, the, the model was that beneficiaries were also to be part of the equity, the sweat equity. So whomever had skills, you would put your skills to play in creating the communities. There was this group and we started throwing money with the intention that we would get a house somewhere. I, well, at least I suppose to still have my book with 11,000 in there. I don't know where that money gone. They don't give out the land. We just have the paper. The paper is to show that we are part of it. We paid our money. And you are one of the beneficiary whenever. 
the, 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 the program we get underway and houses are built or whatever it is. They came in and said we could um, join this thing and throw money in a tally book. So it's like we go and throw it by the NCB bank, which used to open in front of the Shell station there in Ligani. The project was estimated at around $7 billion and it should have run from 1994 to 2007. In 2012, I have heard people saying, I still haven't gotten title. I have paid for the lot that was given to me under Operation Pride, and I still don't know what is happening. I see so many of the Operation Pride sites where the infrastructure work is incomplete. A crying shame. All right, for Operation Pride, I see a lot of people get help. I'm seriously. But it's like friends, our friends. When we use friends and friends, I use it like this. If you're in a certain community that generates a lot of votes, then that community will get a little help. When we use a little help, like say Rockford community, Pleasant Eyes, and them places, because of the, 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 the strong ties within the political, not here if JLP or PMP, they will say, all right, then we are, we are pushing out things to help them people there, to have them own house. You understand me? And everybody Operation Pride help. It's not everybody Operation Pride help. There was a lot of interference politically. Because I witnessed firsthand in some cases procedural irregularities. If you're part of a project and you have the minister assisting, because when, when, when this is government driven and you're looking to who is at the helm of it for assistance, and then you don't you realize sooner than later that even as you seek to build communities through these Operation Pride, you're building a nation. Part of what went wrong with Operation Pride, you know, there were a lot of informal contracts. So what is the scope of the work to be done? Who knows? At what cost it is to be done? Who knows? As long as at the end of the day, some of the workers in my constituency or some of the people who support me politically are given the work. Many things went wrong. And a lot of Jamaican money has gone, government money has gone down the drain. We actually have one case in court for overpayments, and there are several others that if the evidence could be put together, should go to court. The fact is that in many cases, the bonds seem to have gone into a deep, dark hole. There is this expectation that once government work is available, it's going to be time for the supporters of the political party to get work with no reference to their competence, and especially in buildings. Every man is a builder. What is the standard at which they're building? Who knows? Wor road work, everybody can do it. Talking about the infrastructure side now of a project like Operation Pride, where roads have to be put in, water pipes have to be laid, whatever the full works. And so many people, I have seen people on sites who have no competence, really no competence, doing technical work. People are moving out of the area largely because of crime and violence, but importantly because of the lag time in terms of infrastructure, road, water and light. Has enough been done? Of course not, because we're still suffering from a project that meant well but has gone wrong. And what is even worse for me is that we do not learn the lessons. And so you have other projects coming on and you see the same things being done. And the cost gets greater and greater. Corruption, development, or democracy, there is a link. Hmm? If you are tasked with the responsibility of doing something, you must be held accountable for it. And if that accountability includes, at the end of the day, a prosecution, then by all means. We don't even know where we stand right now. You know, see, call me fight me struggling and build up the, build up my little house here. My family help me, my children them help me. We don't know where we stand. One, you know, the serious problem is the, the land title. Because once we get the, the land title, then persons will start to develop their infrastructure. And once the infrastructure is in place, then, you know, other, other, other bodies will come in to Mona Command, giving the persons, the, the citizens, a sense of responsibility. So, 
persons will have to go out and get a job and educate themselves, make sure so everything is happening properly. So the, the land types will be one, the education level on, on both schooling, teenage pregnancy, parenting, I mean the roles of the government and the roles of we, the citizens.